a puppet um, warp on this uh, tail so he can um, be bending. So in order to do that we're going to click on the puppet tool and um, allow to show mesh. So you want to click that and I usually do an expansion of two triangles of um, 700. Um, you can go 300, 500, 700 is, is what I'm usually doing. So I'm on this tail layer and it's unlocked and I'm going to click and put a uh, pin right at um, the location of the um, of the rotation point. Um, it's not showing my mesh so I want to click on show mesh and you can see that it's picking up the tail. You want to watch that it has um, the entire tail in that. If it doesn't then you need to bring your expansion up. So I hit three and you, you'll be able to see that it's going to have a bigger um, section around it. Um, but for my purposes, um, two is good. Um, you can also mess with the triangles. So 300 will be less triangles. It'll be faster to render. Something like that actually will be will work just fine for what I'm doing. I want to be able to um, bend this thing right about um, here and another place here. So I have three pins in this location, and the way that that works is in this layer, you can see that there's different meshes, and um, I have a puppet, and this particular pin um, is um, right there. So what I want to do is on this this part and actually I want to go further down the timeline because I want the pin to be the thing that's moving further down. I'm going to wank this around so you can see that it's holding still there and I want to actually pull this out a little bit too. I want to get that and you get these little move tools. Um, uh, the Bezier handles it's a motion line and so now it's going to feel a little bit more natural. It's going to have a, a puppet moving action and that is really what I want to be working with here and so I need to show um, my preview window again it keeps on hiding itself and uh, with my workspace set to to here I'm going to uh, give that a play and uh, see how it's running so it's going to feel a little bit more natural which is good um, you can see the the little laughing head. So if I want this um, to actually run on an arc, I'll show you guys how to do that. Um, so this particular location, I want to be at that location in the timeline and I want to not work with the, the head, but this puppet part. Um, so I have to click on the tail and mesh one. If I arrow down and I click on it, I'll be able to get um, the location of each of these pins. So I'm on puppet pin 3, it says. If I want to rename that layer, I can hit return, and then that can give me, I can now type in the, the name of the file, of that particular layer. I'm going to call it top of tail. And I'm going to just go through and name these things mid tail hit return to say yes to it. So return to allow myself to rename a layer um, bottom of tail. Okay, so now that I know which one is which, on this top of the tail, this has um, pins or motion trackers as you can see, um, keyframes down there. Um, and I'm going to zoom in on this section so I can get a little bit more of a natural arc on, on these um, handles of this um, motion line. Um, so I'm going to just grab that handle and make it do a motion that will track from there to there. And we'll see how that runs by hitting RAM preview. I need to get my timeline to be at the very beginning here. And way over there. So let's go to this and uh, test with um, RAM preview. What is that going to look like? It's not doing full speed yet, but now it is. So it's going to feel a little bit more natural and it actually um, I think that it's 
probably going to be moving a little bit too fast, but let's let's see. I'm going to zoom out and uh, click off. Hey, little gator. And uh, now hit RAM preview on that. Oh, that's pretty cute. And it's it's the start of my animation using puppet tools in a very simple way to to get um, a little bit of movement to get this character to to feel like it's alive and activated. So with just a simple distort tool, the puppet tools, and the rotation and move tools within After Effects, I'm able to get this character to be alive. So I set up a render. There's our gator animation and. Uh, first, I like to test it in the RAM preview. This is set to loop. You can have it do um, various different things, but this is one I want to loop. I'm going to hit the play button. My timeline indicator was set at the beginning, so it's going to be able to play through this whole thing. Green means that the RAM preview is playing at full speed. However, you can notice that it's not actually playing at full speed by looking up here. There they giggle, and then a big long pause. In order to, uh, to really see the real time, we need to render the file and look at it in quick time. So I'm going to uh, stop the animation um, RAM preview right now and go to Composition, Add to Render Queue, and this has now given us a render. There's a couple of things that you need to do to be able to make sure that it, it is um, going to the right place and it's saving in the, as a right file type. So we're going to work in the output area right now. Output 2, where it says Gator Rigged Move, which was what the Photoshop file was called. Um, we want this to actually be um, a, um, a file that is um, named exactly as I want it. So this would be called, for this one, Gator ABCDEFGH. I like to uh, name it in that naming convention. So this is a quick time move. You don't have any other choices here. You'll get those choices um, over here in the outmet output mode. So save it as that. Um, that file, its location needs to be in the folder that um, your original Photoshop file was in and uh, any of the other um, moves that you're, you're putting in needs to be in that folder. Okay, so in output mode we're going to click on this thing that says lossless. It's going to give us our opportunity to um, choose our format. Um, for our particular purposes right now, a QuickTime file is good. This is going to be our source file, RGB. Um, and preserve RGB is a really important element because um, sometimes when I'm working files, the color turns out to be really different than what I expected, and that can happen if you don't um, preserve RGB. So any opportunity I get to check it is a really important one. So back to main options, just want to discuss with you guys um, the opportunity here to do um, file resizes if you wanted to. Um, so like if you wanted to make this 540p, you would put that in there and it would resize that um, down, to the, down to the right size. Um, and actually, sorry, 540 would go there for 540p. But um, we're not going to do that. This is a source file, so we're going to keep our size. And there is no audio at this point, so we're all good there. So let's say OK. So that gives us a custom QuickTime, gives it our location where it's saving to. And then we have this render button. Um, make sure to hit the render button, otherwise you're sitting there smiling <laughs> and nothing's actually happening. Um, this yellow line, which is not there yet, um, <laughs> will start to render along the edge um, when it's going. So we'll just wait for this thing to render out. Made its file go to where it needed to go. So the next step is to um, kind of minimize um, your um, project there and go take a look at um, what we've got. So this is the file that I just made and I'll control click it and I'll open it with QuickTime Pro and I'll take a look at it in QuickTime Pro. Let's view it um, with loop on and there you can see that it's a lot faster. <laughs> uh, my little gator. So. That's the project and how to export the file. You can see that it's running at 15 frames per second. Um, I've got the movie inspector on right now, so that is helpful to see um, 
what's what's happening in that file. So um, hope this helps and uh, let me know if you guys have any questions um, and make sure to check out the Kendall Web Lab for um, other examples. All right, bye-bye.